Hey everyone, Adam Guthrie here from I Feel Good magazine. And um, we're in Byron Bay and I'm with Simon Hill, Plant Proof. Thank you for having me. Mate, thanks for being Great here. Great to be here. Thanks for having me <laughs> today. Um, yeah. We just did a podcast together. Yeah. And um, it's really cool. But I'd like to hear Simon's story now because um, it's interesting, you know, you've done so well with sharing the message of plant based diet. And you've got a physique that actually, you know, is inspiring to a lot of people that you can actually build a body mm. with plants. So I'd love to know your story. How did you end up going plant based, mate? Yeah, I've I've always been interested in in health and fitness. Yeah. Coming out of high school, I did a degree in physiotherapy, and I had sort of ambition, drive to become a a sports physiotherapist and I wanted to work with elite athletes and, and work with them in sort of uh, rehabilitation and and help them through their injuries and get them out on the field so they can achieve whatever their goal was. Mm-hmm. And I did that and I, I finished uni and I started working with um, AFL footballers down in Melbourne and I was working in a, a sports medicine clinic in, um, in South Yarra. I'm not sure if you know down there. No, on, uh, Melbourne awesome. Road, there's a there's a practice down there called Paran Sports Medicine Centre. So there's a great environment, a lot of sports doctors, some of the best physiotherapists in Australia working down there who I was working under. So I was learning a lot and and I loved the, the football environment. You know, I, I played football myself. So being in that environment, you know, a bit of a boys club, I, I had a great time and it didn't feel like work. And I was able to help people get more out of their body. So that, that was like my passion. Um, and then I personally, you know, I started in my sort of early 20s going to the gym, training, and at that stage of my life I was eating what I would call like a bro science diet, the type of diet which sort of gets handed from one dude at the gym to the next ah, dude. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, okay. That's why I call it bro science because yeah. it's based on probably just going to bodybuilding.com and reading the latest blogs and or buying men's health magazine yeah. um, and just sort of reading a snapshot snapshot of a meal plan, which is something along the lines of uh, lean, lean meat, um, some sort of chicken or lean beef or salmon or something like that. Um, with some broccoli, maybe some spinach. That's if I wanted to get really out there. <laughs> um, so, and then a lot of like potato and sweet potato. I was having very little rice. I was having no quinoa. Like these were f- pretty foreign foods for me in my right. 20s. And almost to the point where I would look at them as unhealthy. I'd look at rice and think that was unhealthy compared to sweet potato. Okay. Why? Why would you think rice is unhealthy compared to? So this is well. So this is my early twenties. That's because of the information that I was reading, like everything Mm. on on bodybuilding.com and this bro science diet. Rice wasn't a big part of those meal plans. Mm -hmm. Um, Things that were more of a focus were very protein heavy foods, eggs, dairy. Now I I didn't have dairy because I stopped having dairy when I was seventeen, and that was that was. Because I had de- developed an understanding that every time I would have milk, I felt really lethargic, sluggish, and it wasn't agreeing with me. Mm-hmm. So I made the decision one day. I said, I'm going to stop having um, yogurt or milk, and I felt instantly better. But at 17, I didn't, I didn't, have, didn't connect to go, hang on, maybe I need to look at other aspects of my diet. I just did that, kept going with everything else that I was doing. Anyway, so through my 20s, I sort of had that diet of um, what I was just talking about there, the bro science diet. Yeah. So coming back to that that bro science diet and you're training elite athletes to get the most out of their bodies, were you building your body at that stage yourself? Yeah, so I was training <laughs> in the gym. Yeah. I was definitely training in the gym. Um, I wasn't seeing amazing phenomenal results or anything. Okay. It was... My, my gym was very much like a bit of an afterthought in terms of the rest the rest of my day and work. You know, I'd try and throw in a 30 or 45-minute gym workout at the end of the day. I didn't really have any set structure with my workouts. I was new to the gym and I was just sort of going in there, throwing a few weights around, eating what I thought was the best thing to eat. And 
you know, I was at uni and stuff, so like a lot of weekends were drinking. I was never a huge partier, but you know, the Australian culture, Australians like to drink a lot, particularly yeah. through uni. So I was in this environment where you would, um, you, you'd work a lot, you try and throw in some gym, you try and eat healthy, and you drink on the weekends. And I wasn't really seeing any real progress, right? And it, sort of the, the, the lifestyle habits were counterproductive to the gym, what okay. I was trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. So I was not really getting anywhere. And as I progressed through my 20s and then towards my, my sort of middle, mid to, mid to late 20s, more, more so than mid, my brother started to get very interested in plant-based nutrition. And he's three years older than me. And I've always been very evidence-based in terms of like from, from a physiotherapy point of view, not nutrition, just mm-hmm. like medical students, physiotherapists mm-hmm. do nothing by yeah. way of nutrition, Wow! right? We did nothing. Yeah. So I felt a little uncomfortable in, in the AFL environment because I didn't know anything about nutrition and the nutritionist that was there, they were just doing like a vanilla one meal plan suits all to everyone. So it was... What was that food? What? That was similar to what I was eating. Meat. Yeah. A lettuce leaf or a bit of a bit of um, broccoli and a bit of spinach if you're lucky. Yeah. But mainly eat meat, eggs and dairy. And it was, yeah, it was all about protein. Protein, protein was, there was not much about gut health or about fiber, the role of fiber or the mm. role of um, what the micronutrients in whole foods, this, that wasn't emphasized, right? And there was no individualization or whatnot for different players, you know, depending on what their body was like. And mm. um, so, so as my brother started to explore this this plant based lifestyle, I started to use my understanding of clinical research to look at the science about nutrition. And there was things that I was finding that were very conflicting with how I was living. And we're conflicting with how the players were eating. And I was like, shit, why? I'm like, either what I'm reading is fake news or there's something wrong with the way that guys like me are eating. And I started, the more and more I started to read, I was like, okay, I, I, I think I understand. At the start, I was like, okay, I think I understand that eating more plants or being fully plant-based is certainly healthier for me from a, a, a disease point of view and long term. My next question was, am, will I be able to perform? Would the players be able to perform? Would I get, am I going to like go backwards in the gym? Will I be able to put on size um, eating these different foods? And that then that fear sets in, right? So I went into this journey with some fear in the back of my mind, but at the front of my mind, I'm like, okay, I know that this is going to stand me good stead long term i want to do it now you need to work out how you can do that and also achieve the physical goals and i started to piece it all together i started to look at you know other people out there for inspiration looked at what they were eating so who did you look at for that inspiration were the people out there already building bodies or maintaining bodies that had switched there were a few people that had done um had done sort of physical or competition style um, activities and they were fully vegan. Yeah. Not not so much in the bodybuilding at that stage. Uh-huh. Um, now you've got guys like Nima Delgado, who I speak to regularly and um, he talks a lot about what he eats and he's a, he's a really big guy. Yeah. Um, but like Rich Roll, for yes. example, he had done it and had competed in ultra endurance events. And for me, I was like, well, okay, he, he might have a different body type for me and be really lean and, and endurance, but the food that he's eating is all plants. It's powering him to do these absolutely crazy phenomenal like endurance events. Well, that's good enough for me, right? Plus, you get the long-term benefits. Yeah. So, I was like, okay. Um, you know, my brother had jumped all in at this stage. Oh, really? He'd already jumped in uh, and, and his wife had and... And he maintained his size? It, it, yeah, it, yeah. Like, so, he's... I mean, he's building his body. Like oh, wow. he's, so, so he's maintained it and building it and works out a lot. And, um, my, I think it's really important that the, the influences that you have around you, um, that it's, it's crazy how having him sort of push me down that journey. And then, and then I was on my own journey, but my equally, my girlfriend 
she grew up in Mullumbimby. She grew up with a mainly vegetarian diet. So I had these like good um, people to lean on mm. who made my transition easier and more enjoyable. Um, I, I wasn't met with any resistance in my sort of personal yeah. life. Right. So you weren't this weirdo. No, I wasn't or this weirdo. Like this I, vegetarian, I, vegan. I dude. wasn't this weirdo. I, it was the opposite. <laughs> uh-huh. I was this guy, yeah. right, from Bondi who had decided he wasn't going to eat any more animal products and he was still going to work out and still build muscle and be strong and be confident and masculine. And people's ears started to prick up and were like, that's different, you know? Yeah. And I, I, it would spark conversations in the gym because I wouldn't go to the gym and, you know, I've got nothing against sort of like the vegan T-shirts and merchandise and stuff. But my approach is different. Like, I don't, I don't, sh- I'm not really like shouting my message as such. And it's, I just wanted to do my own thing. And if there were people that were interested, it would, they would feel, I'd feel approachable. It's what I like about what you do. Your whole website is about the questions that people already have in their mind. Yeah. And you're answering those questions, their concerns. And it's like, um, it's a safe place to come and, and you're inviting people that want to be interested. To get the real information because you're very big on the science side of it, yeah, which is great. A lot of people need that information, other people just they're happy, they see a result, and go, yeah. Well, I'm going to do that too. Um, but your site allows you to do that, and I like the approach where that you have that if people are interested, they'll ask a question, and rather than you go and preach it, I yeah. take the same sort of philosophy. Yeah. I think it's a much more effective way to make change. I think it's, it's very hard to change someone's behavior yeah. if they're not receptive to it and they haven't opened up their mind to the idea of, of looking at something from another angle. And if you're approachable, like w- when I go out and sit down at dinners, I mean, now all my friendship groups know how I eat. <laughs> but at the start, I would sit there yeah. and I wouldn't say anything. I would just rock up to dinner. And particularly when I was transitioning, I didn't like. I never, I didn't, I never wanted labels or anything like that. Like I fall under the vegan label of the way that I live, and and I would call myself vegan now, certainly. But like at the start, I was almost hiding it. Like I would go out and just order what I knew was vegan. People would sort of look at me, or if I was turning up to like a a, a business meeting with someone and they organised a restaurant. Then I just sort of like somehow pick the vegan thing or like walk to the toilet Whoa. and grab the waitress on the way and say, hey, there's, there's not much on the menu that is completely vegan. Is there anything you can do for me? And doing it away from the person on the table and then it would come out. But then that would start, people would catch on and be like, you don't eat meat, do you? And they'd be like, nah, I don't, I don't eat meat. And, um, they'd be like, oh, how are you feeling? I'd be like, oh, I'm feeling great, you know. And that gives people a really warm way of going, okay, maybe not all vegans are in your face preaching it. Like, and then if, if they're the type of person that is, doesn't like confrontation, they go, okay, well, maybe I, I can, could see myself living that lifestyle, you know, mm-hmm. or I, maybe I could eat more plants. Like, here's a guy that's doing it and not creating a huge fuss. Yeah. So that was kind of my approach. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, your approach where what I found was really interesting is like you're almost embarrassed to let people know you're eating plants. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, it's – I don't like attention. Okay. I, I, I don't yeah. – I'm the type of person when it's my birthday, I don't want anyone to know. Yeah. I I don't want – I don't want my girlfriend to post things on, on, on Facebook about my birthday. I would much rather go to someone else's birthday yeah. than my own. Nice. Um. And we were talking about this before, like it's that would most people would find that hard to believe with that by looking at the information I put online and putting, I guess, myself out there a little bit in the public. Mm. But I've always been the type of person that just wants to, I don't want to create the fuss about me. I'd rather sit down at a dinner table and not be like, hey guys. I'm now vegan. Let's, you know, I need to order. I need to call the waiter over and make a big fuss or anything. Like I, I just that for me was I, I sort of feared that. Yeah. Um, 
So I just sort of didn't want that attention on you. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't want that attention. I still, I still don't want that attention. I, yeah, yeah. It's just my personality, I think. Which is really interesting because you know you've created this big social media following now in such a short period of time—a year. Is that right? Yeah, a I year. started on. Um, I started on January first. Very cliche. I. I was talking with my girlfriend about putting some information on online and the first place to do that, the easiest place is social media. So I started the plant proof Instagram. I think the first post was probably New Year's Day or January 2nd or something. And then I started the podcast in April. Wow. Yeah. And it's grown so fast. And how do you feel now that that information's in there, into the marketplace, um, into reaching so many people. How does that make you feel when you like to keep things quiet and private? How does that make you feel now that you're more exposed to the mar- to the wider uh, world? I want, it's not really a marketplace, yeah. it's a wider world. I feel, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say it, there's a degree of responsibility and pressure that comes with um, building a community mm. where you're putting information out because I feel responsible for putting out genuine information that is has no agendas and is going to actually help people. Yeah. Um, and from a personal point of view, like I said, I try. I, I I might have glimpses of my personal life on there, but I think a lot of people probably don't know actually that much about me, right? If they go through it, they they probably think they do because they see my face and they see... But if you go through and read the information, there's a lot of nutritional information. Absolutely. And that is true. Like, I just trying to get ready for our chat, there's nothing out there on you, really. It's just what you're doing is generally... He really cares about people and wanting to teach them how to eat a whole food plant-based diet and all information on your website um, comes from that energy. Like you can feel it. It's um, it's just caring. It's giving people the the science, the facts, and and you stick to that formula. Why did you decide to go down that path with just giving facts and helping? It's very practical what you do yeah. because you've got all those little guides. Yeah. You know, someone beginning, yeah. somebody. He's got one for if you're experienced or if you want yeah. to build a body or you want to do endurance. What? I think, I think I put myself into the the shoes of someone who hasn't studied nutrition yeah. and is just an everyday person who genuinely wants to eat for their health for today and for tomorrow. They want to feed their kids for today, for tomorrow. Yeah. And I, having reviewed a lot of the science out there and a lot of the headlines in the media, I can understand how confusing it is, and. Confusion leads to people not changing their behavior because if you're confused, it's too hard to make a change. Mm. And that plays into the favor of big industries, processed food companies, right? They they benefit from the public being confused because the habits will stay the same and you'll continue to buy their products. Mm. So my basic premise is, okay, I want to I break things down and give people a simplistic overview of, of what what does the actual science show and let them make their own choice and show them that this lifestyle is not extreme. You can live in, in abundance. There's so much food to choose from. It's a lifestyle. It's not a diet. Um, a diet implies that you're going to go on, off, on, off. This mm-hmm. is a change that you do for life. And, um, and unlike being like that, you're – just going to go like that progressively you're going to you're going to feel more whole as a person more purpose more fulfilled more empowered more compassionate as a result of eating you know whole plant foods and and i'll let people know like how far you want to take it that's up to you there's eating more plants is only going to do you better right and your kids better um but i understand everyone is in their own on their own journey and in their own um life um so people people do things in different time Mm. yeah yeah it's true it it is it's some people jump into it and can do it 100 percent. some people just dip their toe in and they will follow something for a month 
and then they fall off the wagon and go back to their old habits. But then they realize eating this way made them feel so good, and I find that they come back and keep doing it, and that's that that growth upward trend that you see yeah. in people's bodies. So how did you feel when you went from the meat and the di- – well, you didn't yeah. have dairy, but the meat and the egg. Yeah. high so animal protein meat, diet to this. Meat was cut first for me. Yeah. And then I was sort of on that. I had a little bit of a pescatarian phase for probably only like a month. Uh-huh. And I was like, I don't – I don't need to eat the fish anymore. Um, I can get everything that fish is get, giving me, yeah. plus more, yeah. from eating whole plant foods. So I removed that, and then I just the last thing for me to remove was eggs. But throughout that process, I was feeling better and better, which was reinforcing me to continue to remove these products. Plus, I think as I started to, to transition and when I only had eggs left, you know, that was probably over like a, a four four month period. I started. I was reading a lot more about um, the environment, reading a lot more about the animals, and that was just starting to draw me into the wow. lifestyle. And and then when I realised again that what the nutrition from eggs I could get elsewhere, and I, and I love to cook. I started experimenting with you know this basic. Uh, swaps for eggs like tofu scramble and like you know doing chickpea omelets and things like that and I was like this is cool I can do it nothing stopping me so that was it eggs were out um, and and to be honest at the start I didn't feel bad eating eggs but then the more I looked into it and I'm like I was being distracted by the pretty packaging mm-hmm. and the, the, okay. the use of the free range and all this stuff and then when I looked into it I was like uh, I I don't, if I'm not going to participate in the the, the the factory farming of the beef, I shouldn't participate in this. And, you know, I started to look at it like I'm voting with my dollar mm. of how I'm spending mm. and what my plate looks like. Mm. And um, from a physical point of view, I started the, – the main, I think, benefit that I personally felt I was training a lot, so I felt like my recovery was better. Yeah. I, at the very start, when I cut the beef, the meat out, I, I lost about a, two kilos and okay. I can put this down to a couple of things and I think it's actually very common, particularly for males if you're training a lot. Mm-hmm. The, the calorie density of animal foods, ca- animal foods are a lot more calorie dense per bite, mm-hmm. right? So when you transition to a plant-based diet, you need to eat more volume. Mm-hmm. Naturally, that's going to happen when you're eating heaps of vegetables and stuff and legumes and whatnot. But you need, if you're looking at two plates, an animal-based plate and a plant-based plate, the plant-based plate, the same calories is going to look a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah. What I was doing was when I transitioned, I was kept the volume the same and I, was, I hadn't realized that, okay, I'm actually consuming a lot less calories combined with like losing some inflammation. So I lost a couple of kilos and I started to have a bit of that fear reinforce I'm like okay <laughs> my is this happening is this happening and like um I've got to I've got to work out how to, to get on top of this I quickly realized it was all it was was simply calories right you were needing I was, calories to and, keep the bulk. And, and once I knew that I was mm-hmm. like okay well the best thing is I can up these I can eat more mm-hmm. and I love to eat so I'm like I can up the volume I can up the volume and these are going to be super rich like uh, micronutrient dense this is great. Let's let's just start eating more. And I started eating more, and you know it's not like crazy amounts. I'm not eating all day like a like a, a cow, um, <laughs> but that just it goes to show like cows do eat all day. They do, yeah. You know, constantly eating a large volume of, of food. Um, but as soon as I eat my mo- I adjusted to that volume. It was easy. I can I can lose weight. I can maintain weight, or I can gain weight. Like I'm eating. Protein, fat, and carbohydrates, just like anyone else. Yeah, yeah. So and it's, it's all found in plants. It's it sounds yeah, all found in plants. It sounds crazy, but let's break it down. It's three <laughs> macronutrients plus fiber. Yeah. And whether you're eating meat or not, you can get those three macronutrients and fiber, and they equal calories. And to put on size, you need energy and calories. To lose to lose weight, you need to be consuming less energy than you are expending per day and to maintain it you need to be at a balance now where you go and get that energy from that's up to you yeah but at the end of the day 
you're getting that's what it is it's energy from from three macronutrients so it sounds like you started out it was from the health point of view the long term you wanted to eat a yeah. plant-based diet for health you're worried about maintaining your size but you know you went through a process where you realized that it was you dropped a little weight yeah. and it was based on calories and then you were able to balance that out and work out, okay, what is, how much, what are my portion sizes yeah. I need to make to actually keep my size, which you've been able to do. So how then, you know, you could get it from meat and you can get it from plants. You obviously chose the plants. Besides the health, did you notice anything change? Like, did your energy yeah. change? Did your vibration, did your consciousness change? Why do you stick to the plants now? Is it purely because of health or is it other reasons? It's the health drew me to this way of living. Yeah. And let's just say that, let's just pretend there was nothing ethically wrong with factory farming and it wasn't bad for the planet. Mm -hmm. I would still eat plants for the health. Yeah. So if they had the same effect on animals and the same effect on the planet, I would still choose the plants. Yeah. But my decision to, to go to plants was firmly reinforced by just how empowering it is to know the impact that your food choice can have on animals and on the planet. Would, if, if let's hypothetically say that I found out that eating plant-based 80% with 20% animal products was the best, right? the best way to do it for health. I would still, personally now, having been attached to sustainability in animals, still eat 100% plant-based and I'd fine-tune it to do it as as well as I could. Mm. And that's, I think, me growing as a person and becoming a little more selfless and not just thinking purely about myself. But I'm happy that it all lines up and, and eating all plants is best for your health the animals and the environment so thankfully we don't have to worry about that scenario <laughs> that's right we don't it's all good only love comes from it yeah good comes to your body comes yeah. to the planet comes to the animals and um so you've gone on this journey to a plant-based diet obviously you know it's interesting that i find everyone that does it that comes to it from a health point of view um their vibration rises and they start to see the animals and the planet in a different light and it happens to everybody it must be something in that food that makes it happen i don't know what the science behind that maybe you can look into that so you're the science guy i think you just become more conscious and open Mm. you you become open Mm. when when we're closed Mm. and we we to 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 adopt a whole food plant-based lifestyle for most of us Mm. we need to relearn Mm. right Mm. because we grew up a certain way and through media or just routine, we we were given animal based foods or processed foods, and that was the norm. And we've had to like unlearn, right? And I think that process of unlearning opens you up. Mm. And when you're open, you can take in information, right? That like otherwise a, you just shut off from. Yeah, it's like this wider vision that you see, yeah. and it's not as narrow. So tell me a typical day now for you, yeah. eating wise, eating workout wise. wise. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of my body type as well, I'm I'm what you would call like a hard gainer, which mm-hmm. means that if if I'm not eating enough, mm-hmm. I will lose weight. Whether, whether that's now on this diet or uh, lifestyle or eating animal products, same deal, right? So, I've got a body type where my body is naturally just trying to come back down, you know, to its happy body weight, I guess, <laughs> where I'd be if I didn't work out. Yeah. Um, and so for me, I need to, I really do have to concentrate on eating, particularly if I'm traveling because you can lose your routine and you start to eat a little less. Yeah. I do anyway, um, if you're working a lot. So for me, I will, if I'm training and wanting to improve in strength and size, I'll, my first meal in the morning could be anything from like a smoothie bowl where I'll, I'll have in there soaked oats, I'll, a lot of berries. I love berries. I mix it up. Blackberries, blueberries, raspberries. They're so full of antioxidants, which is really important if you're training and your training creates, um, 
inflammation in the body creates free radicals in the body. Antioxidants are what stabilize those, which is super important. Um, but yeah, it's all inflammation. All diseases created by that inflammation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'll th- usually throw into that sort of smoothie bowl along with the berries lots of dark leafy greens, whether it's kale or spinach. Um, I'll put in there some some other fruits like frozen, but I freeze a lot of my fruit, freeze a lot of the spinach as well. Um, just makes it creamy. Do you cook the spinach before you freeze it, yeah. or is it just yeah? so you can cook it? You can put yeah. it in there. Um, you can I can buy now like organic frozen spinach as well in blocks. Yeah. Um, the other good one is to steam some cauliflower and you freeze that and you put that in your smoothies. You don't taste the cauliflower at all, but it makes it so creamy and so rich in, in antioxidants. Uh-huh. It's amazing. Um, so I put that in. You can put frozen broccoli in there, um, frozen banana. I said. What else do I put in there? Some some healthy fats like hemp seeds or chia seeds. Um, and then usually with like some other some plant based milk mm-hmm. or, What's your or water. Um, I love I love almond milk. I I, I drink soy milk. Um, drink like organic soy milk. I've I've actually been having my girlfriend makes a really good like um, almond macadamia blend. So mm-hmm. we just mix it up. To be honest, um, mm-hmm. it's whatever we have in the fridge. She makes big batches. But equally, I mean, I can have it with water as well yeah. in there because there's so much in there and there's so much sweetness and stuff coming through the, the fruit. I think as you jump off processed food, your affinity to fruit in um, sugar and fruit, it grows mm-hmm. um, because you're not having those hyperpalatable foods that are yeah. made by food scientists. That's right. So <laughs> the artificial stuff, you want the natural sweetness. Yeah, but they're good in the in yeah. the in the whole form. That's yeah, they are. They're great. They're great. Um, so that's, so that's a smoothie. Yeah, that's like a breakfast. So like a smoothie or a smoothie bowl. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I could just do like an overnight oats where I just have like a cup of oats soaked in some plant milk overnight. Yeah. Put some put some nut seeds or chia seeds on top and lots of fresh fruit, and that's like a super easy one to have. Um, lunch, I do. I just make a lot of like Buddha style bowls. We were talking about it before. Tons of tons of vegetables. Um, lots of dark leafy green vegetables. I like my cruciferous vegetables with broccoli or cauliflower. I'll have some unrefined grains in there, so whether it's brown rice or quinoa, they're usually their my go tos. Um, and then I'll add in that's the bulk of the plate between those two. And then there's some um, legumes. You know, I love lentils. They're like my my super food. I call them. Um, <laughs> So lentils or kidney beans and black beans, you know, put some corn in there sometimes mm-hmm. through that. Depends on the cuisine. Like, you know, you're a chef, you can use flavors like coriander and corn and hot sauce and avocado and make a Mexican style bowl or whatever. Or you could do tamari and ginger and um, wakami flakes, to nori to start making in Japanese. It's, I play around with it, but the, yeah, so there's some legumes and then um, some healthy fats. So, that can come, it's always from whole foods. I don't cook with oil like you at home, yeah. but it could sneak in if I'm eating out. Yeah. That's okay. Um, but yeah, so avocado, nuts, seeds. Sometimes top my food with a bit of kraut or sprouts. Yeah. And that's it. There's so many different ways you can do that. <laughs> yeah, there is. So that becomes like a lunch and a dinner type yeah, bowl. Yeah. I, I, I notice you love tempeh. I love tempeh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about tempeh. Where tempeh. did that come so from? Where did that love come from? Well, I've spent a lot of time in Indonesia like you. Yeah. And, they got the best um, tempeh. Their they? tempeh is better than anywhere. And yeah. They, tempeh actually originated yeah. in, in Indonesia. I think there's a couple of places that claim it. Mm. Bit like, oh, that's the main one, isn't it? Like, right? bit like whoever who claims that they made beer. But, um, <laughs> the Indonesians definitely uh, were one of the first, if not the first, to yeah. make tempeh. And it's, it's fermented soybeans. It's pretty much a whole food. Like there's that that bean is still there, and there's a slight processing where they use a culture and it becomes fermented. Yeah. Um, but it's not like an ultra highly processed food where it loses its fiber and you're stripping nutrients out. It still has all those macronutrients, which is why I like it. Um, and it's versatile, so you can you can particularly if someone's transitioning, it has a, a sort of chewy, firm texture, so they can instead of having meat, like some people like to have that texture in their meal and in their bowl, it gives it a bit of substance. So you can use it like that if you're transitioning. 
and you can it takes on flavor so you can marinate you can spice it you can you can do it into cubes or you can you know thinly slice it you can steam it you can bake it you can put it on a pan there's it's very versatile yeah. and it's tasty yeah. and it's health promoting I, mean, I can't get enough of it. I know. It, it's <laughs> awesome stuff and there's some brands here in byron bay that yeah. do really good ones yeah yeah um yeah, so for those that don't know what tempeh is, it's actually a soy bean. So you would have had edamame, which if you went to a Japanese, that little green bean, that's what soy is, this little pod with beans in it. Now they take that and they ferment the bean inside the pod and they turn that into, they ferment it, turn it into a cake. And it gets this, like if you're looking at brie cheese, that white sort of mould that goes on the outside, that furry stuff, yeah. that happens with true tempeh. It's got this beautiful white sort of um, coating to it and my favourite way I love to like slice it bake it in the oven go super crisp yeah. and then I like the Indonesians ketchup manis have you had ketchup no. manis uh, tempeh manis no. tempeh manis uh, it's like it's a sweet tempeh so they deep fry it but I bake it so yeah, you okay. cut it up into little small cut it into really fine slices and then into really small pieces so really yeah, small okay. slivers, bake it super crispy. Yeah. And then, you know, I use... What, I like don't, little tiny bits? Yeah, little tiny bits, but yeah. really thin. Okay. Yeah. You don't want squared or yeah. chunky, just thin. And then, traditionally, they do it with sugars and... But I use... I, I make um, with dates. I get a whole oh, date, right. puree it with some water, and I cook it down with that with some chilli and some lime and all these other wow. things. And um, actually, I'll, I'll share my... My tempeh nanas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got to try it. It's so yeah, yeah. super good. Yeah. Okay. A bit of tomato. And once That's you start eating challenge that, for next week. Tempeh nanas. Really okay. good so, um, so you, how many meals a day? To keep? Um, oh, probably three big ones and a couple of good-sized snacks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Good-sized snacks. Yeah. <laughs> like the main meals. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, like three three meals of decent volume yeah. um, that I'll sit down and... and to yeah. enjoy yeah. but then yeah my like for snacks I'll have uh, I mean I, I do a lot of nuts and fruit keep it pretty simple yeah um, chia chia puddings yeah things like that yeah, yeah it's my go to too so I've got a question for you because you know I had a heart attack and um, started to eat a whole food plant based diet and was able to reverse that heart disease and then um, got all this energy and I went and did an Ironman triathlon yeah. and <clears throat> through that I, I was 110 kilos and I lost yeah. 30 kilos and I feel amazing like my health is great everything's good um, but I've always had this vision I'd like to build a body yeah. and what tips not just for me but for yeah. anybody else out there that may be wanting to transform their body shape how would you advise them to get started on that process? Eating wise, workout wise, what would you? Yeah, so probably ten percent of the results will be from what you do in the gym. Okay. And ninety percent will be outside. Mm-hmm. And but that that ten percent in the gym is very important. And if you don't, if you're sort of not into training, it's good to actually get a trainer to start with. I think mm-hmm. for people just to at least get them on the right path. Mm-hmm. Um, to set up a program for them and consistency is the key consistency is the key with the workouts and with the eating mm-hmm. right if you're like we were talking about before if you're just sort of like working out floating through two or three workouts a week and then you're drinking on the weekend you're not really going to see any huge improvements mm-hmm. right maybe someone with crazy genetics might but for the, for the average person you're not going to yeah. so it's when you first jump into the gym as a new person and you dedicate yourself to it across the week, you'll see some great improvements in the first six months. They call them newbie gains, right? <laughs> um, and that's really good. It's positive. It reinforces that person they're on the right path. But the trick is anyone that you see who has a good physique, they've worked for it, and usually they have a great routine, mm-hmm. okay? And the routine consists of training regularly, Knowing going into a training session with intention and, and doing enough volume per week. And what I mean by volume is volume is w- the, the weight that you're lifting mm-hmm. and the reps. Mm-hmm. And if you're not progressing either one or two or both over the weeks, you're actually not going to put your body in a position where it's going to want to grow. Mm-hmm. 
So if you go in and you do 10 kilos, five reps, and you just do that same thing for 10 weeks, your body has no stimulus to grow. Okay. But if you're doing 10 kilos, five reps, and by the end of the program, you're doing 14 kilos, 10 reps, and in the, in the middle, you've been progressively working to that, you've given your body stimulus along the way to grow, to adapt. It's mm-hmm. all about adapting. Mm-hmm. Now, to fuel that and to allow for the muscle growth along that way, you have to eat right and sleep and not be stressed, right? Or do those as well as you can to maximize your result. Mm-hmm. So the that's where the other 90% outside of the gym, the nutrition is so important, the rest is really important and you know, alleviating stress. And those things all play into... Um, you know, longevity as well. So I think they're my key top level tips. And then obviously from a nutrition point of view, trying to eat as many whole foods as possible. It's going to reduce inflammation. It's going to improve your recovery as you're working out harder and you're burning more energy. Maybe look at your volume of your food. If you're losing size, you need to eat more. Um, it's not the, there's something wrong with the food. It's the volume. Right? So increase it, increase everything proportionally. Okay. Um, Okay, so the inflammation um, and the recovery, you talk about the recovery. What does the inflammation stop you from doing and why is it important to recover? So, well, inflammation, it's important to recover because, so volume, the other aspect of volume, so is, I said, weight and rest, right? Now, you'll be able to increase that quicker if you can the more consistently, uh, sorry, the more frequently you can tra- train that exercise. Okay. So if you can only, if that 10 kilo by, 10, 10 kilo by five rep exercise, you can only do that once a week because you're too sore. Yeah. It's going to take you a lot longer to get to 14 kilo, 10 reps. If you're recovering quick and you can do that exercise twice a week, you'll, uh, you'll essentially get there in half the time. Okay. So I see. So a plant based diet, allows you to recover quicker, which means you're not as sore, so you can train sooner to get the gains as opposed yeah. to the meat. I mean, there's a lot of anti-inflammatory molecules in plants, yeah. right? So, and, and the meat can be very pro-inflammatory. Yeah. So, yes, you, you, you sh- by default, you'll be, you'll be less inflamed. Yeah. on a plant-based diet and then I mean we can't discount the stress because stress can cause inflammation yeah. and sleep so outside of nutrition there's other factors as well that contribute to inflammation mm-hmm. um, but you're putting yourself in an advantage from an inflammation point of view by having a diet that is very anti-inflammatory yeah so man well that's good information get a trainer guys get a trainer <laughs> to start, start with get a trainer to learn how to do it and um yeah, just jump into it and just keep educating yourself. Yeah, and you've got some great resources on your website. Yeah. Have you got a guide for, um, you know, eating plants to eat this way? Yeah, I've if got working out. I've got yeah, I've got a, a few different blogs on sort of eating or tips for putting on size or strength. Um, I've done a plant-proof food pyramid, which walks through how I would sort of balance my plate and. Nothing changes to, with your goal. If your goal is to lose weight or put on weight or whatever, I say to people, you still can eat the same food. Mm. It's just the volumes that are going to change, right? Mm. Um, because that is the best food to eat regardless of your goal. And it just comes down to, um, you know, what, yeah, what your personal goal is in terms of losing weight, maintaining or putting on weight. Good tips, man. So, guys, awesome. head to his website. He's got amazing resources there, Simon has. Um, he's got a big heart and he likes to share and encourage. One last question for you. Why do you want others to know about this knowledge? I think it, well, it stems from going back to when I, why I got into physio. Like I wanted to help other people and I, and I, I understand how good it feels. <laughs> little turkey. Little, little bush turkey. <laughs> I, I, the, the feeling, Serving others is far more fulfilling. It's a, it's a richer sense of fulfillment mm. than anything else that I've done. Mm. And for me, I have had this knowledge for a while and been living this lifestyle and I was hesitant to put it out there. But then what tips me over the edge was like, well, 
I've got an opportunity to give people information, whether it's one person or 10 or 1,000 or 100,000 or whatever it is, I have an opportunity to give people information that can help them. And if I'm withholding that information, then that's certainly not fulfilling. And yeah. in fact, it's probably the opposite, you know? So, yeah, I feel, I feel almost like I've got a bit of a responsibility. Yeah, it's interesting you say that. Um, like withholding the information and not sharing that information once you get that knowledge. When we were in Bali, and I first met Simon in Bali, I was talking at the Vegan Festival, but one of the, th- the activities at the Vegan Festival was three people, two chicks and a guy, were doing this breath work. I think it's O2 breath yeah. work, awakening. And I did that class, that process, and I went through this breathing. They take you through a breathing process that accesses intuition. And one of the things happen when you breathe in a certain way your body becomes like clamped up and you can't, they take, explain what's going to happen to you while you're doing it. But my hands wouldn't move. They were like claws like this. And as they said, when that happens to you, ask what you're holding on to. And I asked that question when it happened to me and it said, don't hold on to the knowledge. Yeah. And here you are sharing that intu- intuitively that, yeah. you know, if we're given knowledge and we have an understanding, it's it's nice to be able to pass it on to yeah, others it makes sense. in a nice way. I mean, that's what happened to me. It's interesting that you're doing that in such a loving and caring way yeah. and supporting people. Man, so it's all about. what's your path now, Lee? My path is, is now that I've sort of done, had a year of experiencing properly serving other people, it's to just to continue following that and being positive. I think if you're a positive person and you approach things with that mindset, a lot of opportunities come along the way and it's up to you to grasp them. And, you know, I haven't I haven't sort of penciled in anything in particular that I, I need to do or want to do other than just whatever I'm doing as I'm navigating through to, to continue to be authentic with my message Mm. and um, as long as I do that like every day when I wake up I know usually think to myself what are a few things that I want to do today that will make me happy and if I think it's a good exercise for people to do because they can be very simple things Mm. right too often we wake up and think oh I've got a thousand things to do today and you hear everyone talk about that but it's okay to have a thousand things but just bring it back down. What are a couple things, you could even write it down, what are a couple things that I would like to do today which will make me happy? And you get those done and by the end of the day, you're happy. Well, what were your, what were those questions? What were those answers this morning when you asked yourself that? What are a couple of things that will make you happy? One of them was to make sure we did our, our <laughs> podcast and to, to meet you and connect with you properly. I yeah. mean, we met in, in Bali. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is to go and check out the this markets in Malambimbi, but there's a place over there that – two things over there, actually. There's some waterfalls over there that I've been told I need to go and have a look at. So I'm going to go check those out later. And and Tori's here. So he's uh, here from Miami and has, hasn't seen anything, oh. right? So it would be cool to show him some, some nature around here. And then there's some um, – there's like a, a new, there's a new vegan uh, place open in Mount Mal- so we're going to check that out. Yeah, yeah. It's a little um, one near the... Um, starts with a P or something. Yeah, like, um, uh, like a Spanish type name, yeah. but it, it's really good food. Oh, you went there? Oh, yeah, I've been there. Yeah, and it's just small. You sit on bean bags. Yeah. It's, it's, you'll enjoy it. Really yeah. good food. But I think, yeah, just showing him around Mount I've spent a lot of time there before and like... He saw a wallaby yesterday. And he, he, he was losing <laughs> Whoa. it. Yeah, so um, that'll be good fun. That sounds like a fun day. Yeah, yeah I like that tip, guys. Just every morning, um, ask yourself what are one or two things I could do today to make me happy. And um, it's pretty simple. Yeah. It is simple. It is. Mine is just get down to the beach. Yeah. Actually, I have a, do- a journal, and yeah. I go down to the beach. Do you drink coffee? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I do my thing in the morning. You know, go and swim or surf or run or whatever. Yeah. Then I go to the top shop here in Bondi yeah. and I have a coffee and I just have my journal and I write down one thing I'm grateful for and then three things that if I do today is going to yeah. make me feel happy and I'll make yeah. sure they're achievable. Yeah. Yeah, you got to make sure they're achievable or yeah. else you're just, you know, you can be your harshest judge yeah. otherwise. Yeah. And, um, 
yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. We, we often have a thousand things to do, like I said, but it's not always realistic to try and do them all. That's true. It's not healthy to stress yeah. out about them. Yeah. So, bro, thank you so much. It's good to meet you. You too, man. Again. Thank you for coming on the podcast. The podcast should be out, I think... I mean, it could be out before the new year, I'm hoping. Yeah. I've got a few recorded that I've got to bang up, but yeah, it could, could be out. It's only going to be out end of December or start of January. Okay. Well, this year, we might even put you out next week. Okay. Perfect. That's cool. Well, um, thank you, guys. Hopefully, Pleasure. we can connect in the future. Yeah. Cheers. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks mate.